page 279. The Goddesses of Birth and Death. The Katha Shurit Shagur 70.112 equates the knowledge or equates the Kumbha or Ghatta explicitly to the uterus. The equivalence may explain why the Navaratra quote nine nights unquote fertility festival to all mother goddesses begin begins on the first of Ashwin by establishing a fertility jar bracket ghatas sthapana bracket closes stop the jar is set in some earth in which seed grain is carefully planted quote to encourage the fields unquote stop the cella c-e-l-l-a of the shrine is decorated with food of all sorts in the villages this is the special time for blood sacrifices to the goddesses women are the principal worshippers during these night nine nights even when <clears throat> male priests have taken over the cult as happens at the more profitable cult sports cult hyphen sports the festival ends officially with a sacrifice bracket often only symbolic comma of flower comma but still officially called bolidana bracket closes to saraswati and the visarjana of that goddess other parts of the country have their own equivalent observances such as the vara lakshmi worship in the south here the pot is decorated with a painting or a silver mask of the goddess filled with grain set up with due ceremony and worshipped the special function of the jar may account for the remarkable fact that potters rather than brahmanas are in general demand among many lower castes to officiate at funerals and some other ceremonies their special hand drums and chants are generally required for a prophylactic ritual before a wedding ceremony and sometimes credited with special power over ghosts para the kumbha as representation of a mother goddess still survives in many south indian festivals of which the karaga at bangalore may be taken as a specimen it is the special annual fertility rite of the tigalas who seem to have come from north arcot and a professional page 280 <clears throat> market gardeners about bangalore the animal sacrifices formerly made to the pot are now reduced to one the rest being replaced by cutting lemons or boiled cereals in the final procession the main participant arvaka colon hereditary taigala priest carries the pot on his head but is dressed as a but is dressed as a woman his wife has to remain hidden from the sight of men all during the festival the taigala representatives at least one from each family cut themselves with sharp swords but no blood flows during the ordeal this festival which is obviously not aryan has been brahmanized only during the last 150 years is now associated with a temple dedicated to the eldest pandava dharmaraja and the goddess made into his wife draupadi the main content of the sacred pot being a gold fetish known as her lakti shakti
an auxiliary Brahmana Purohita at present Sri Venkata Raya Vadayar, from whom I obtain these details, now attends even at the most secret part of the ritual, which is performed in a shelter with two Taigalas, one of them the Taigala priest mentioned before, the other a Taigala who leads the way for the procession. Naturally, these secret rites are not divulged, but the whole festival is obviously, obviously a women's observance taken over by men. It is to be noted that though the Taigalas are a low caste, every temple in Bangalore sends an idol representing its god to follow in the final procession, and on the whole this may be called the most impressive local festival. The untouchables have a similar one a couple of months later. The real Karaga ends on Choitro. April, full moon, after nine days of observances and celebrations. The triple pot, which is itself the Karaga, is not made by a Taigala nowadays, but by a professional potter. Nevertheless, it must still be made from the sediment of one particular artificial pond, not turned on the wheel, but handmade, and not burnt, but sun-dried. The final procession ends with the Karaga pot being thrown into the pond, though the golden Shakti representing Draupadi is quietly rescued by the priest for use against next year. Para. There are two different conceptions of death in the Rig Veda, which gives several distinct funerary rites in its later book, namely Roman.14, comma. Roman, namely, Roman 10.14, 10.18, The earliest concept of death in the RV is unquestionably going to sleep, the long sleep from which there is no awakening. Many of the demons killed by Indra sink down into the eternal sleep. The Vashishta hymns, Romans 7.55, seems to have begun as a funeral hymn, then mistaken for and further transformed into a lullaby. Correspondingly, we have the lower level of the symmetry, H, capital H, at Harappa, with extended burials. The dead sleep peacefully, furnished with grave goods, and supplied with jars that must once have contained the drink of immortality, comma, Soma, page 281. These symmetry is undoubtedly Aryan, and the city itself to be identified with the Hariyupiya, H-A-R-I-Y-U-P-I-Y-A, of Roman 6.27.5-6, though the battle mentioned there might refer equally well to conflict between two waves of Aryan invaders to the first Aryan conquest of the city. When we come to the top layer of symmetry H, however, the character of the burials changes abruptly. The dead adults survive only in jars, where their remains are placed after the adults survive survive only in jars. I repeat, the dead adults survive only in jars where their remains are placed after the body had been cremated or decarnated by birds of prey. The custom is mentioned in all the major ritual books such as those of Ashwalayana, Katyayana, and so on, and the jar where the bones are placed is specifically called the Kumbha. This corresponds to the later Rigvedi concept of death. Roman 1.164.32 Sa Ma Tur Yona Parivita Antar 
बाहु प्रजा निर्वितिम अविनेक्ष अविवेश namely return to the mother's womb and is proved very clearly in the case of symmetry age by the crouch position in which dead infants are placed within the jar apparently the bodies of children could be sent back to the mother directly without being stripped of later fleshy accretions by fire or carrion eaters further guesses may be made that the star like decorations on the jaws are developed oculi but this would need closer proof incidentally we are in a position to explain one peculiar decoration in this later harappan grave pottery namely the peacock containing a recumbent human figure within the disk that forms the bird's body if the figure was sitting or upright it might have been taken for some deity the horizontal position excludes this and a reference in the mahabharata 1.85.6 clarifies the situation there the dead are represented as having been eaten by birds and insects of various sorts but specifically by peacocks bracket shithi kontho bracket closes comma whence the figure within the peacock must be the dead man himself the bird is not the common carrion eater so that he must have had a peculiar sanctity which is confirmed by his being the companion and hence a totem of the river's speech and mother goddess saraswati with the particular name shiti kontho he is associated with the dread god rudra shiva and a vahana of skanda as well para a little later as in the shatapatha brahmana roman 13.8.3.3 the earth herself becomes the mother into whose lap the bones are poured out from the kumbha but clearly the original mother or at least her womb was represented by the pot therefore it is clear that vashishtha and agastya is being born from the urn are giving a good aryan translation of their birth from a pre aryan or non aryan mother goddess page 282 the effective change is from the absence of a father to the total denial of a mo- <clears throat> mother a clear marxist antithesis necessitated by the transition from matriarchy to patriarchy after all aryan means a particular manner of life and speech not a race we may conclude seeing that extended burial comes first that the harappan groups of aryans had not the general habit of cremation and that the later idea of a return to the womb is acquired from some of their former enemies whose remnants after the conquest were absorbed by comparatively peaceful means unless of course it represents a second wave of invaders we cannot prove directly that the manufacture of pottery was also a monopoly of women in the earliest stage here or that urvasi ushas was a potter but ritual pots continue to be made by the priests hand without the wheel as in satbra roman 14.1.2.7 ff and the sped with which the clay is dug is to be formally addressed by the priest court thou art a woman unquot comma as again in shat bra roman 6.3.1.39.1 think that this goes back to the period when both digging 
for agriculture and pottery were women's work. Then that the mother goddess, I repeat, that the mother goddess should weave the pattern of her son's fate and sew or embroider it, bracket like Raka in 2.32.4, Suryat Vapa Suchya Chidya Manaya bracket closes is most natural. Text continued in next file. Page two eighty two Para. Another survival of the mother goddess cult into later time seems to seems quite clear from the story of Ayla Pururava's parentage. He is the son of a prominent bracket for the Rig Veda bracket closes goddess Ila and the Mahabharata says that Ila was both his father and his mother. The Puranic account then changes Ila's sex, the son of Manu having become a woman by stepping into a grove sacred to the mother goddess Parvati. In Maharashtra, almost every village, mother goddess has her grove now usually dwindled to a thicket, though occasionally bracket, as at Fagne, near Betsa, bracket closes, quite impressive, but there is no longer a taboo on male entry. But this is not merely a later affair, for such initiation appears quite explicitly in the Rig Veda, though its meaning has been obscured by mythological accretions. We have in Roman 8.33.19. Cologne quote. Gaze downwards, comma, not up, semicolon. Hold your feet close together, semicolon. Let not your rump be seen, semicolon. For thou, comma, <coughs> for thou, comma, O priest, comma, art become a woman. Stop, quote. Nothing could stop, unquote. Nothing could be clearer than this, which shows, bracket opens, with the preceding ricks, bracket closes, that a male priest has been initiated as a woman and told to behave accordingly. And this cannot be Aryan, for the mother goddess plays no part in the warring life of Bronze Age pastoral invaders and plunderers, whatever their past might have been. The conclusion is that the Rig Veda shows the absorption of a pre Aryan stream of culture, page 283, which goes into the very source and origin of Brahmanism. Urvashir's metamorphosis in Kalidasa's drama is merely a late inversion of the original taboo upon male entry into the mother goddess's preserve. To this day, women may not approach certain comparatively minor gods such as Vetala, comma, Bapuji Baba, comma, and at some places Kartika Swamin, bracket Skanda, bracket closes top para. The rick cited above occurs in the Kanna K -A -N -V -A, family book of the Rig Veda. The Kannas were demonstrably 
late comers into the Vedic fold, like the Kashyapas, though the latter occupy a much higher position in later Brahmana tradition. The Kanna Narada is reported by several Puranas to have become a woman by bathing in a sacred pool. He regains his manhood by another immersion, but only after a considerable period as a woman. Narada enjoys a very high position as sage, being quoted or addressed from the Atharva Veda down, yet he is still called a Gandharva in the epics. In Buddhist records, he and Pabbata, P A B B A T A, are gods. A Narada in a Brahm, a Narada is a Brahma, Brahma, another a former Buddha. Mark of exclamation. Most important of all, the Anukramani makes him and his brother or nephew Parvata joint authors RV Roman 9.104, but with an alternative ascription to quote the two Shikhandinis, comma, Upasanas, comma, daughters of Kashyapa, unquote, stop. Referring back to the Bhishma story where that hero is killed by a Shikandini metamorphosed into a man, one may recognize traces of a very deep layer of myth regarding the tradition of mother goddess Kals, Apsara's human sacrifice. Para. At the end of Shakuntala Act 5, the wailing heroine is taken by a shape of light which carries her off to the Apsara Tirtha. At the beginning of the very next act, the nymph Shanumati or Mishrakeshi comes from that sacred pool to spy upon the hero. She has just finished her turn of attendance upon men at the ritual investiture bath. Quote, Java Sahujanasa Abhishekaila. Unquote. Stop. Thus Kalidasa balances the Vikrama Vasyam Vikrama Vasyam with another play where the Apsara heroine whose name makes her a bird goddess is rejected by the hero directly inverting the original Urvashi legend the quote great bath unquote at Mohenjo-daro instead of being the quote hydropathic establishment, unquote, that Marshall calls it with consistent ineptitude was probably the prototype of such tirthas consorting with the human apsaras was part of the ritual. This would be the Indus Valley analogue of Mesopotamian ritual hierodule H-I-E-R-O-D-U-L-E, prostitution in temples of Ishtar, I-S-H-T-A-R, para. The origin of the much-discussed sati immolation of the widow with her husband's corpse now seems fairly obvious. The first widow in Greek myth to survive her husband and remarry rather than Page 284. Enter his flaming pyre was Gorgophone, G O R G O P H O N E, comma, daughter of Perseus. Widow burning can only have developed from suppression of matriarchal tradition, presumably as a warning or precaution against its surreptitious revival. 
We must remember that the ordinary tribesman knew only group marriage in both types of society, not the chiefs, heroes, gamos. Hieros, H I E R O S, Gamos, G A M O S, in italics. So, comma, quote, husband, unquote, denotes some chieftain or sacred king who gained his title to sovereignty, bracket, over the new society fused out of two distinct types, bracket closes, prominent primarily by formal marriage to some local high priestess or court, queen unquote stop. If then the husband died, there were ample grounds for suspicion that it was the wife's doing a reversion to the old ritual. The sati custom would not only discourage this, but act like a curious inversion of the older sacrifice and count further as provision for the departed leader in the next world. Yet the Sati is herself not on the same level as the dead hero's horse. How panoply, bow, comma, panoply and accouterments immolated with him for the immediate for she immediately becomes a goddess with her own cult <clears throat> the ancient but still recited marriage him RV Roman 10.85.44 admonishes the bride Kulon a uh, Pati Ghani a uh, Pati hyphen G H N I Patigni A Patigni A T E D H I equal to sign quote become a non husband killer unquote stop. This excellent advice is followed up with an invocation to Indra to give her ten sons and to make her husband the eleventh. This would carry the proper meaning only in a society which had not completely forgotten that the husband was once sent to the gods in sacrifice but never the son. Para. The Urvasi faded away but they are responsible nevertheless for the goddesses of the later pantheon that are married peacefully to the major gods. Their living representatives developed what became with the rise of a trading society and cash economy before the Mauryan period, commercialized prostitution. Significantly enough, the older, superannuated, state-controlled meretrices, M-E-R-E-T-R-I-C-E-S, of the Orthoshastra 2.22, 2.27 enjoyed the position of madams and supervisors over their younger colleagues with the title matrika used for mother goddesses. They are also responsible for the unholy institutions associated with temple cults in the least Aryanized parts of India. Finally, they gave birth to two leading Brahmana clans the Vashishtas and the Agastyas. When the jar-born sage Agastya, quote, nourished both colors, unquote, comma, Udbahu, Varnau, Puposa, in RV 1.179.6, 
it cannot mean two castes but both Aryans and non-Aryans for he belonged to both and his hymns show clearly the character of the compromise. Only intensive and systematic archaeology can decide whether the Augustian penetration of the South is pure myth or has some connections with the great megalithic tomb of, quote, saints, unquote, stop. Page 285 notes. 1. A. B. Kit, the religion and philosophy of the Veda and Upanishads, Harvard Oriental Series, Volume 31 to 2, Cambridge, comma, Massachusetts, comma, 1925, page 183. 2. Max Müller, Chips from a German Workshop, Volume 2, Second Edition, London, 1868, pages 117 FF, particularly page 130. 3. In R. Pichel, P I S C H E L, and K. F. Jeltna, Vedische Studien, Volume 1, Stuttgart, 1889. Pages 243 to 95. Hereafter, Rigveda references will be indicated with or without the preceding abbreviations RV. 4. For the fire drill, as Urvashi and Pururavas, CF, Shat Bra, Roman 3.4.1.22, semicolon. For the fire drill and any human procreation, Brihodara Nyaka Upanishad, Roman 6.4.22, and other places. 5. According to M.O.H. M.B.H. 5.187.39-40. Amba became a river with half her body. 6. The Brihadvaita, the Brihaddevata takes Surya, Sharanya and even Vrishakapayi as forms of Ushas. Bracket. BRD dot Roman two dot ten dot Roman seven dot one twenty two one bracket closes top. The speech goddess Vach is there equated to Durga, Sharoma, Urvashi, Yami in the middle sphere Roman two dot seventy seven and to Ushas in Roman two dot seventy nine to eighty. Urvashi is derived as Uruvadani, Roman 2.5.9, making all possible allowance for the syncretistic tendency of such post-Vedic explanatory works, it is clear that these goddesses had something in common. This common factor can only have been their being mother goddesses. For Shoruma and all other goddesses whose names terminate in M A. We have the clear, though late, testimony of the Amar Kosha, one dot one dot twenty nine. Semicolon, Indra Loko Mata Na Ma. Indira Lokomata Ma Kshiroda hyphen Tanaya Rama Stop seven A V dot Roman fourteen dot two dot fourteen clearly supplements the Rigvedic ceremonial in the direction of group marriage court. In her here, comma, O men, comma, scatter E seed, unquote, semicolon. The 17th century Rick hopes that 
The 17th Rick hopes that the bride would be, quote, not husband slaying, unquote, comma, and the next that she would be Devakrama. Devrikama, D E V R dot under R K A M A. The collective evidence is overwhelming. The chapter ends here. Next chapter, page 286 Women's Patronage to Temple Architecture, Harihar Singh. Read in next file. Page 286, Women's Patronage to Temple Architecture, Harihar Singh. The royal as well as common women, like men, took active part in the temple building activity in ancient India. They not only patronized it but also inspired and influenced their concerts and relatives in this task and in fact a large number of edifices could reach their final form due to their patronage. This will be clearly reflected from the dynasty wise survey made below. Para. At the very outset it may be pointed out that the political condition of North India during the period when the temple building activities were carried out has been very disturbed. As the earliest relevant records belong to South India, we begin our survey with this part of the country. The Ikshakus of the Andhra country the excavations at Nagarjuna Konda have revealed a fairly large number of edifices and inscriptions which afford us useful information about the position and status of women of the Ikshaku kingdom during the 3rd 4th centuries AD. It is interesting to note that while the Ikshaku kings patronized Brahmanism and performed Vedic sacrifices, their concerts and other ladies of the realm were devotees of Buddhism and erected ma monasteries and temples in honor of the Buddha. Footnote 1 Amazingly enough, 90% donors at Nagarjuna Konda were women. Footnote 2. The most celebrated lady of the Ikshaku family was Chanistri. C A R Chamtisiri. C A M T I S I R I, one of the two uterine sisters of King Chamta Mula, the founder of the dynasty. She is known to have founded the Mahachaitya at Nagarjuna Konda in the sixth year, AD 246, of her son in law, Madhavi, Madhariputta Sri Veera Purishadatta for the benefit of the masters of the Upper Mahavina Salia sect. Footnote 3. At the Mahachaitya, she also founded an apsidal temple, bracket, Chetiya Ghara, bracket closes, number 1, and a stone mandapa, bracket, Sela Mamtava, bracket closes, Surrounded by a cloister, bracket, Chatu Shala, bracket closes, footnote 4, page 287. The Mahachaitya took about a decade.
to attain its final form and all these years it received the munificence of this pious lady footnote 5 another pious lady was upasika bodhi siri who founded another apsidal temple number 2 and various other religious edifices at the Mahachaitya for the benefit of the fraternities of the Ceylonese monks. Footnote 6 It was possibly Bodhisiri who first introduced the construction of Chaitya Griha at Nagarjuna Konda. Footnote 7 The third one was Mahadevi Bhati Deva. Mahadevi Bhati Deva, who calls herself the daughter in law of Vasheti Putta Siri Chamtamula, the cons- consort of Madhari Putta Sri Veera Purishadatta, and the mother of Siri Ethuvula Chamtamula. <coughs> she is said to have founded a Buddhist monastery with all the essentials for the benefits of the masters of the Bahusuntia sect, which is identified with the monastery number four at the site. Footnote 8 The fourth lady was Mahadevi Kodabali Siri, daughter of Siri, Veera Purisa Datta, sister of Siri Ehuvala Chantamula and wife of the king of Vanavasa who founded a Buddhist monastery number 5 for the benefit of the masters of the Mahishashaka sect. Footnote 9 Apart from these architectural activities, the women of the Ikshaku kingdom set up a large number of pillars at Nagarjuna Konda. One inscribed carved pillar near Stupa number 9 was set up by the sisters, mothers and consorts of Vasithi Putta Siri Chamtamula in the 20th year of the reign of King Chamtamula's son, King Madhari Putta Siri Veera Purisadatta. The lady donors are 31 in number and their names are inscribed on the pillar. Footnote 10. All the Ayaka pillars, A-Y-A-K-A, at the Mahachaitya have been donated by one or the other of Ikshaku queens or princesses. Footnote 11. The Chalukyas of Vatapi. The Chalukya queens of Badami are known to have been highly religious and charitable. They accompanied the kings in the battlefield. They were well educated and were gifted in many arts. And they were even vested with the responsibility of administration and governance. Footnote 12. As a builder too, they would have occupied a distinctive place in the royal court. This is clearly evident from the fact that Loka, Loka Mahadevi, princess of the high higher family and the chief queen of Vikramaditya II, AD 733 to 4 to 744 to 5 caused the construction of Lokeshwar temple identified with Virupaksha temple at Pattadakal to commemorate her husband's triple victory over the Pallava king Nandi Varman II of Kanchi. The architect of this temple, the most magnificent among the Chalukyan monuments, Page 288 And the best of its time in the whole region of South India, Gunda by name was also honoured by her. Footnote 13 Her younger sister, Trilokya Mahadevi, the second queen Vikramaditya II, also built a temple 
the Trilokyeshwara Temple, identified with Mallikarjuna Temple, which stands beside the Virupaksha on its left to the northwest. Footnote 14. Cousins, C O U A C N S, has identified the portraits of this queen, and the king carved upon one of the pilasters of the hall of this temple. Footnote 15. Another charitable lady was Kuntha Kama Mahadevi. This Chalukya princess and consort of the Alupa king, Chitravahana I, circa AD 675-700, is credited with the construction of a temple called Anisajya Vasadi at Lakshmeswar, ancient Pudrigiya, P-U-R-R-I-G-E-R-E, district Dharwar, at the request of her husband. Footnote 16. The Chalukyas of Bhengi. The Eastern Chalukya Queen, Ayana Mahadevi, the consort of Kubja Vishnu Bhardana, AD 615 to 33, was a very pious lady as she founded a Jaina temple known as Nadumbi Basadi at Vijayabada and Kalyana Vasant and executed a grant in favor of the temple. Footnote 17. She must have been held in great esteem by the succeeding rulers of the family. Her above temple grant was renewed in AD 762 by King Vishnu Vartana III. Footnote 18. The Rashtrakutas of Maniaketa. The period of Rashtrakuta ascendancy in the Deccan from about AD 753 to 975 was perhaps the brightest epoch in the history of the region. While the names of the Rashtrakuta kings like Krishna I and Amoghavarsha are known for their patronage to art and literature respectively, that of Akka Devi is known for her, uniting all the principal religions of her time. Indeed, the Belur inscription of Jaya Simha, dated AD 1022, informs that she practiced the rituals of Jina, Buddha, Ananta, that is Vishnu and Rudra, and built temples to three Purusha, that is Vishnu, Brahma and Sarikara. Thus, this interesting personality synthesized in her not only the Brahminical cults, but also all the main religious systems of her time, namely Hinduism, Buddhism and Jainism. Footnote 19 The Chalukyas of Kalyana The royal ladies of the Chalukya dynasty of Kalyana, 11th-12th centuries AD, occupied high positions in administration of the kingdom and enjoyed respectable status. Footnote 20 But very little is known of women who patronized religion and art and built temples. Page 289 According to an inscription, Rebbala Devi constructed a temple of Keshava Deva in Puvina, Pusa Vadangail and made land grant for its maintenance. Footnote 21. Atti Mabbi, A T T I M A B B E, wife of the Chalukya officer Nagadeva, was a very pious lady. When her husband died in a military campaign, she fully devoted herself to the promotion of Jaina faith and built 1500 Jaina temples in different parts of the kingdom. Page 22. This would have certainly raised her position in the eyes of the people who would have remembered her with great respect. She won the name of Dana Chintamani. Footnote 23. The Gongos of 
Talkad, Western Gongos. The ladies of the Royal Gongo House of Talkad were also of religious temperament and built temples. They had considerable influence on the ruling kings and got donations made by them for the maintenance of these temples. Indeed, we learn from the Sudi S U D I plate of S E Shako era. 860 AD 938 that quote at Shundi the comma the chief bracket town bracket closes of the Shudva Suldhatavi S U L D H A T A V I comma the glorious Diva Lamba dash the one Rambha of the world dash celebrated the sacrificial rites of six female mendicants and caused the famous Jaina temple to be built. Stop unquote footnote 24. It is also inferred from the grant that Butuga B U T U G A made a donation of land to this Jaina temple. Footnote 29. Footnote 25. Similarly, an inscription of S.E. 884 A.D. 962 reveals that Mara Simha II, A.D. 961 to 74, granted land to a Jaina temple founded by his mother Padma Barsi. Padma Barasi, P A D M A B B A R A S I of Konagula Desa. Footnote 26. The Santoras of Patti Pombulo Chapura. The Santoras of Patti Pombul Chapura, bracket modern Humcha, H U M C H A, in Shimoga district, bracket closes, built numerous Jaina temples almost exclusively under their royal patronage. In this building activity in this building activity the ladies of the ruling dynasty did not lag behind. We know that Chattala Devi, sister of Queen Veera Mahadevi, who was consort of Veera Santora II, founded the famous Panchkuta Basti AD ten seventy seven at Humcha in memory of her parents. Footnote 27. The Hoysalas and the Kakatiyas. The Hoysala king Vishnu Vardhana with his Jaina queen Santolo Devi made a grant to the Shiva temple in full Darbar. Footnote 28. Likewise, the Kakatiya queen Rudramba granted lands for the upkeep of a Shiva temple. Footnote 29, page 290. The Pallavas of Kanchi. The Pallava queen, like their concerts, were great patrons of arts and had a commanding influence upon their husbands. This is evident from the fact that Ranga Pataka, the chief queen of Rajasimha, bracket Narasimha Varman II, AD 695 to 722, bracket closes, got an independent dedicatory shrine, bracket Nitya Nini Lesha Varagriham. Bracket closes, built in the celebrated Kailasha Natha temple at Kanchipuram, founded by her husband. Footnote 30. Another queen of Raja Simha, whose name is lost, built a similar shrine near that of Rangapataka. Footnote 31. Para. Ma Devi, the wife of Kadakadiya Riyar appears to be a very generous lady as in the sixth year of the reign Kama Pavarman bracket identified with Nandivarman Tellarerinda circa 
1847-72, bracket closes, footnote 32. She caused the renovation of the China Temple, bracket, Palli, bracket closes, the construction of its Mukha Mandapa, the renovation of the Pali and the construction of a temple for Iyakki, I-Y-A-K-K-I hyphen Bhattari. She also made the gift of a big bell to the Palli. Footnote 33. The imperial Cholas, the Cholas who succeeded the Pallavas in the south, carried out a brisk temple building activity throughout the length and breadth of their empire. This could have been possible due largely to the munificence of such royal ladies as Chempia Manu Devi, Chempia Mai Devi, I repeat, Chempian C E M P I Y A. M M A D V D E V I Chempiyamma Devi, comma Kuntavai, and Loka Mahadevi. The most generous and respectable among these was Chempiyamma Devi, Queen of Gandhara Ditya. Many temples are attributed to her. In the 11th year of her son, Uttama Chola, AD 982, she rebuilt the Tirukoteshwara temple at Tirukodai Kaval. In the 12th year of his reign, AD 983, she settled a Brahmana colony, established there a village after her name, and built a temple to Shiva, which received generous donations and gifts. from the royal household. She also constructed in the same year, that is AD 983, the Vimana, Snapana, S-N-A-P-A-N-A, Mandapa, Gopura, Parivarilayas, etc., of the Vridha Girishwara temple at Vridhachala. In the seventh year of Raja Raja the first, AD 90, 991, she built a large temple of Achaleshwara at Tiruvarur and donated money to meet its daily requirements and repairs. She also built a temple at Tiruvakkaral, footnote 34. In fact, most of the stone temples could attain their final form during the reign of Uttama Chola, owing to the munificence of the Queen Mother, Chempianma Devi. Footnote 35, Para. The pious lady, Kuntavai, the elder sister of Raja Raja I, AD 985 to 1014, and daughter of Chuntara Chola, page 291 inspired her brother Raja Raja in performing religious deeds. She has been reverentially mentioned in the great temple at Tanjore. She herself made a number of gifts to this and other Shaiva temples. Besides, she is said to have founded three Jaina temples, the first at Tirumalai, the second at Dadapuram, and the third at Tirumalavadi. Unfortunately, they all have disappeared, except for a few Adhishtana mouldings lying in the Prahara of the Tirumalai temple. Footnote 36. Also at Dadapuram, she erected a Shiva and a Vishnu temple in the 21st renal year of Raja Raja the first, AD 1006, footnote 37. This generous lady thus built temples irrespective of cult and creed. 
para loka mahadevi the consort of raja raja the first was also a pious lady she is known to have built the kshetrapala shrine at tiruvalanjuli in or before ad 1006 and the members of the royal family made donations to the temple footnote 39 footnote 38 para these munificent religious activities of the chola queens are indicative of the happy position and status which they enjoyed in the royal family they must have possessed huge amounts of money or rich resources of income which enabled them to finance construction of new temples renovation of old ones and to make monetary donation for the maintenance and upkeep of functioning temples the fact that other members of the royal household generally made gifts to the temples constructed by the queens testifies that they genuinely enjoyed a happy and respectable status in the royal family they must also have been greatly esteemed by the people more so after their munificent religious deeds now comma northern india text continued in next file page 291 the imperial guptas and later guptas Though a large number of inscriptions and temples belong to the Gupta period, we do not know of a Gupta queen who built a temple. From this, however, one should not draw the conclusion that the ladies in the Gupta times did not take part in the temple building activity. A grant of the feudatory chief Maharaja Bhuta of the fifth. 6th century AD makes mention of a temple built by his mother Viradhya Viradhika V I R A D H Y I K A footnote 39 similarly the afsad stone inscription of the later gupta king aditya sena records the mahadevi shrimati mother of aditya sena founded a matha religious college and kona devi the queen of aditya sena excavated a wonderful tank footnote 40 page 292 The Pratiharas of Kanauj a large number of temples were built during the long and eventful reigns of the Pratihara rulers of Kanauj footnote 41 The Pratihara queens also shared in this activity at least two temples are safely attributable to them Queen Jaya Vali built the temple of Parameshwara at Buchkala raj raj raja yagha rajya kanka arjy a g h a rajya kang g a k a m kakam in ad 815 and queen chitralekha the consort of mahipala constructed the temple of vishnu at bayana in ad 955 footnote 42 the Gaharavalas of Kanauj 
Kumara Devi, the Buddhist queen of Govinda Chandra Gaharawala of Kanauj, A.D. 1114 to 54, seems to be a pious and charitable lady. She restored the image of the court, Lord of the Will of the Law, unquote, Sri Dharma Chakra Jina, as it existed in the days of Ashoka, the righteous, and placed it in a temple or Vihara uh, built by her. Footnote 43. The Vihara at Sarnath was a large extensive building stretching more than 700 feet from east to west. Footnote 44. The construction and completion of this Buddhist Vihara of the aforesaid dimensions is of considerable significance considering the facts that the construction must have involved a huge amount of money and that her husband Govinda Chandra was a Shaiva by faith. Apparently Kumara Devi was free to adopt any religious faith and possessed much larger amount of money or some regular source of income to spare the sum of money required for the construction and completion of the Vihara. Obviously, she had great influence on her husband. The Chandilas of Jejaka Bhukti the Chandilas of Jijaka Bhukti were great builders and connoisseurs of arts and letters. One of the finest groups of temples was produced at Kajuraho under their patronage. Some of the Chandila rulers like Yashubharman, Dhanga, Vidyadhara, etc. are credited with the construction of some temples there. Footnote 45 but not a single Chandilla lady is so far known who built a temple at Kajuraho. Though the actual evidence is wanting, the Chandilla queens must have inspired their concerts and themselves participated in this temple building activity. In fact, the Ajayagara rock inscription of Veera Varman and his wife Kalyana Devi of V.E. 1317, bracket A.D. 1259, bracket closes, records the construction of a well, a hole, mandapa, and a tank within the fort of Nandipura by the chief queen of Veera Varman named Kalyana Devi. Footnote 46, page 293, the Kesari kings of Orissa. In Orissa, the evidence of women's patronage to religious architecture goes as far back as the time of King Karavela when his chief queen excavated the caves known as Swargapuri or Vaikunthapuri at Udaigiri. Subsequently, we know of four Bhauma or Kara queens ruling the state one after the other. Footnote 47. But surprisingly enough, the evidence of women's patronage to temple architecture during the period when a large number of temples of various sizes and of fine workmanship were being built by the Kesari rulers is very meager indeed. One solitary inscription belonging to the reign of King Uddiyota Kesari U D D Y O R A. I repeat, U D D Y O T A K E S A R I. Udyota Kesari, circa A D ten fifty five to fifty eight, records that the temple of God Brahmeshwara, the present Brahmeshwara temple at Bhubaneswar, was built by Kolavati mother of Udyota Keshari in the 18th year of the latter's reign. Footnote 48 The portrait of this pious lady is probably carved on the southern facade of the Jagamohana of this temple. Footnote 49 
as is known from Madala Panji, the she probably also erected the Jagamahana of the Lingaraja temple. Footnote 50. The Paramaras of Malwa. The records of Bowman patronage to temple architecture during the rule of Paramara of Malwa are very scanty. There is only one inscription of AD 1042 which mentions that Queen Lahini, L-A-H-I-N-I, the younger sister of Purana Pala and widow of King Vira Vigraharaja of Vasantgarh restored an ancient temple of the sun god and excavated a tank at Vasantgarh. Footnote 51 This event falls in the reign of Bhoja circa AD 1000 to 55 who was a great builder and lover of art. The Kalachuris of Tripuri the Kalachuri queens exercised considerable political and religious influence in the deliberations of the state affairs. They not only built temples to deities whom they adored but also met land grants, of course, with the consent of the ruling kings for their proper maintenance. Thus, Nohala, N-O-H-A-L-A, the queen of Yuvarja Deva I, second quarter of the 10th century AD, built a lofty temple of Shiva under the name of Nohaleshwara and endowed it with the gift of several villages. Similarly, in AD 1155, the Dowager Queen Alhana Devi, widow of Gayakarna, constructed at Bhairaghata, a temple of Shiva under the name of Vaidyanatha, together with a matha or monastery of Wonderful Stories, page 294, and a lecture hall and attached to the religious complex, a line of gardens and two rows of rooms. For the maintenance of these, she granted the income of two villagers which were placed in charge of the Pasupata ascetic Rudra Rashi of the latter lineage. Footnote 52 The Chalukyas of Gujarat the period of Chalukya sovereignty in Gujarat from about the middle of the 10th century to the end of the 13th century AD is marked with the prolific temple building activity. It was due indeed to the active patronage of the Chalukya rulers and their concerts that such wonderful temples as those standing at Abu Kumbhariya ETC could come into existence. The Chalukya queens must always have variously prompted, <coughs> prompted their concerts for this activity. An inscription of V.S. 1297 A.D. 1240 informs us that Tejapala caused the construction of two niches in the Lunavashi at Abu for the spiritual welfare of his second wife. Suhada Devi Footnote 53 The women in the Chalukya kingdom built independent shrines also. Nittala Devi built a temple to Parshvanatha at Patadi. Footnote 54 Sometime before AD 1136, Hansi Bai added a mandapa to the extant Neminatha temple at Kumbhariya. Footnote 55. Sumala Devi, the daughter of Lavana Prasada and the second queen of Bhima Deva II, erected the Sumaleshwara temple sometime before AD 1239. Footnote 56. The Chalukya queens are also known to have excavated some wells and tanks. A lake at 
Anahila Pataka was excavated by Udaya Mati, Queen of Bhima I, circa AD 1023 to 1065, which was regarded better than even the Shahasralinga Lake excavated by the great Siddha Raja. Footnote 57. Udaya Mati is also credited with the digging of a well at Anahila Pataka, footnote 58, which is still going by the name of quote, Rani Ki Bhava, unquote. Mayanalla Devi, the queen of Karna, circa AD 1065 to 93, and the daughter of the Kadamba king. <clears throat> Jaya Keshin of Goa was not only an able administrator as she acted as a regent for her minor son Siddharaja for some time but also an interestingly benevolent lady as she caused the excavation of the Mansar Lake at Viramgam which resembles a conch and still carries 357 small temples out of the original 520 along its surrounding ghat or flight of stone steps leading down to the water. Footnote 59 para. Thus this brief survey of the temple building activity both in the south and north clearly evinces active participation of women particularly those of the ruling families in constructing temples right from the time of the Ikshakus down to the rule of the Kakatiyas in the south and from the days of the Guptas down to the times of the Chalukyas, Chandelas, etc. in the north. Page 295 but for the contributions made by these ladies, the religious and artistic activities in the country would not have been so sustained, continuous and richly variegated. As it has been seen, these lady patrons independently undertook construction of large edifices and lofty temples and they were successfully completed. They also made complementary contributions to large-scale projects undertaken by ruling monarchs. They also added new component buildings to the existing establishments either to fulfill the latter's additional religious requirements or for their beautification. At certain times when the ruling monarch was continuously engaged in various wars, the queens appear to have made offerings of temples to various gods both as his consorts deeply concerned with the welfare of the state and also as his representative considering the magnitude and grandeur of the temples that they have built. Para. As already noted, a significant point the present survey highlights is that the ladies of the royal houses were free in following any religious faith of their choice which may even be different from that of their husbands or kings. For example, the Gadhavala Queen Kumara Devi and further that their independent decision in this respect did not affect their relationship or their position and status in the royal family. Had this not been the case, their donations would not have been as munificent and liberal as they were. Para, their patronage to temple building are indicate, indicates, I repeat, para, their patronage to temple building art indicates that some of them at least, for instance, the Chalukya queen, Loko Mahadevi, the Chola queen, Chempia, Chempian Mahadevi, the Kalachuri queen, Alhana Devi, the Gaharavala Kumara Devi TC were in possession of huge amounts of money or controlled such regular and rich resources of income that they could undertake big building projects of great artistic merit and carry them to successful completion. Para. 
a consideration of the total evidence on the point suggests that all the ladies must have possessed money and wealth which they could freely use for such works of religious merits as renovation of a temple, addition of a mandapa to an existing temple, excavation of a tank, etc. Para, the patronage of the ladies to temple art may also be taken to reflect their inner personality. They seem to have been well-educated women, upholding religious and spiritual values and endowed with generosity, liberality and devotion to well-being of all. Considering the successful completion of some of the lofty large temples, para two, page 296, One cannot help feeling that they possessed to some extent capability to manage and control such large projects. Further, when one looks at such a large as well as magnificent temple as the Virupaksha at Pattadakal, remarkable for its perfected balance and form and decorated with highly lively and graceful figures and tenderly executed charming crippers and designs, one cannot fail feeling that certain ladies like Loka Mahadevi were gifted with artistic genius and refined aesthetic taste, whatever their share in the conception and execution of the temple. Para. It has been noted that on request of the queens, the kings have granted lands and villages for the maintenance and upkeep of certain temples. This presupposes that the queens enjoyed honorable position and status in the family and in a natural way exercised due to due influence on the ruling king. Para. Therefore, it may be concluded that the princesses and girls of higher class well-to-do families received adequate education and training and consequently were nicely accomplished and cultured ladies possessing refined taste and administrative ability. They had a regular source of income and possessed wealth and they were free to expend it on meritorious and charitable works as they desired. This presupposes their happy position and their respectable status in the family. Notes 1. T. N. Ramchandran, Nagarjuna Konda-1938, Memoirs of Archaeological Survey of India, number 71, Delhi, 1953, page 5. 2. K. Murthy, Nagarjuna Konda Dasha Cultural Study, Delhi, 1977, page 10. 3. J. P. H. Vogel, V. O. G. E. L, Prakrit Inscriptions uh, from a Buddhist site at Nagarjuna Konda. E. I. Volume, Roman 20, 20. 1929 to 30, reprint Delhi 1983, PP4, 19 semicolon. J.P.H. Vogel, additional Prakrit inscriptions from Nagarjuna Konda, E.I. Volume Roman 21, 1930 to 31, reprint Delhi 1983, page 65. 4. Ibit, 5. Murthy, opposite, page 5. 6. E. I. Volume Roman 20, pages 14, comma 22 to 3, semicolon. D. C. Sarkar and A. N. Lahiri, footprint slab inscription from Nagarjuna Konda. E. I. Volume 35, Delhi, 1960, pages 248 to 9. H. Sarkar, quote. Some aspects of the Buddhist monuments at Nagarjuna Konda, Ancient India, number 16, New Delhi, 1962, pages 69, 84. 
8 EI volume Roman 20 PP 15 comma 23 to 4 semicolon EI volume 21 PP 61 to 2 9 EI volume 20 page pages 15 comma 24 to 5 EI volume 21 page 65 page 297 10 EI volume 21 pages 63 to 4 11 EI volume 20 pages 13 to 14 12 MS Nagaraja Rao Chalukyan Queens the Chalukyas of Badami Seminar Papers Bangalore 1978 page 166 <coughs> Thirteen, J. F. Flit, F. L. E. E. T. Sanskrit and Old Canaries Inscriptions, Indian Antiquary, Volume Ten, Reprint, Delhi, nineteen eighty four, page one sixty four. Fourteen, J. F. Flit, Patadakal Pillar Inscription of the Time of Kirti Varman the Second, E. I. Volume Three, eighteen ninety four to five. Reprint Delhi, 1979, pages 6 to 7. 15. The Chalukyan Architecture, Calcutta, 1926, page 60. 16. H. Shorkar, in Encyclopedia of Indian Temple Architecture, hereafter EITA in capital letters, volume 1, part 2, text. Edited by M. W. Meister, M. E. I. S. T. E. R. and M. A. Dhaki, D. H. A. K. Y. Delhi, 1986, page 98, semicolon. R. S. Gupte, The Art and Architecture of Ihole, Bombay, 1967, page 6, semicolon. D. C. Sarkar, In the Classical Age, Edited by R. C. Majumdar, Bombay, 1970, pages 246 to 7. 17. K. V. Saundara Rajan, in E. I. T. A. Volume 1, Part 2, Text, page 163. D. C. Sarkar, in the Classical Age, page 251. 18. D. C. Sarkar, in the Classical Age, page 253. 19. A. S. Altikar, The Rashtrakutas and Their Times, Pune, 1934, page 273. See also A. S. Altikar in the Age of Imperial Kanauj, edited by R. C. Majumdar, Bombay, 1964, pages 16 to 17. 20. U. N. Ghoshal, In the Struggle for Empire, edited by R. C. Majumdar, Bombay, 1966, page 280. 21. S. L. Shantakumari, Women in the Days of Chalukyas and Kalyana, The Chalukyas of Kalyana, Seminar Papers, edited by M. S. Nagar, Nagaraj Rao, Bangalore, 1983, page 168. 22 Ibit, 23 Ibit, 24 J. F. Fleet, Spurious Sud, Sudi, Copper Plate Grant purporting to have been issued by Burug in Shaka Sambat, 860. E. I. Volume 3, 1894 to 5, reprint, New Delhi, 1979, page 184. 25. K. V. Saundara Rajan in ETTA Volume 1, Part 2, Text, page 186. 26. Ibit. 27. M. A. Dhaki, Santara Architecture, Aspects of Jaina Art and Architecture, edited by U. P. Shah and M. A. Dhaki, Ahmedabad, 1975, pages 191-2. to 2. 28. S.K. Iyengar and R.C. Majumdar in The Struggle for Empire, page 229. 29. U.N. Ghoshal in The Struggle for Empire, page 511. 30. E. Hultz, H.U.L.T.Z.S.C.H. The Pallava Inscriptions of the Kailashanatha Temple at Kanchipuram. 
South Indian Inscriptions, Volume 1, Reprint, Varanasi, 1972, Number 20, Page 24. 31 Ibit, Number 30, Page 24. See also K. R. Srinivasan, The Pallava Architecture of South India, Ancient India, Number 14, Delhi, 1958, Page 135. 32 DC Sarkar in the Age of Imperial Kanauj, page 168. 33 KG Krishnan, Jaina Monuments of Tamil Nadu, Aspects of Jaina Art and Architecture, pages 90 to 1, page 298. 34 M. A. Dhaki. M. A. Dhaki in ATTA Volume 1, Part 1 Text, edited by M. W. Mester, Delhi, 1983, pages 184 to 5, 191 to 2. 35. Ibit, page 196. 36. R. Nagaswami, Jaina Art and Architecture under the Cholas, Aspects of Jaina Art and Architecture, pages 131 to 2. 37 EBIT, page 101. K. R. Srinivasan, EITA, volume 1, part 1, page 231. 38 K. R. Srinivasana, in EITA, volume 1, part 1, pages 227 to 8. 39 S. Goyal, inscriptions of the Gupta age, Mirat, 1984, number 74, page 368. 40. J. F. Fleet, Corpus Inscriptions, Indicarum, Volume 3, Reprint, Varanasi, 1963, page 208. 41. Krishna Deva, The Temples of North India, New Delhi, 1969, pages 21 to 7. 42. B. N. Puri, The History of the Gujara Pratihara, Bombay, 19... Bombay, 1957, page 156. 43. D. R. Sahani and J. P. H. Bogel, Catalogue of the Museum of Archaeology at Sarnath, reprint Varanasi, 1972, intro, page 7. 44. N. N. Dasgupta in The Struggle for Empire, page 422. 45. Krishna Deva, opposite pages 62 to 4. 46. S. S. Mitra, The Early Rulers of Kajuraho, Calcutta, 1958, page 136, number 52. 47. K. C. Panigrahi, Archaeological Remains at Bhubaneswar, Calcutta, 1961, page 203. 48 Ibit, page 43, S.K. Saraswati, In the Struggle for Empire, pages 211 and 546. 49 Panigrahi, Opposite, page 118. 50 Ibit, page 248. 51 P. Bhatia, The Paramaras, The Paramaras, New Delhi, 1970, page 168. 52. V. V. Mirashi, Corpus Inscriptions, Indicarum, Volume 4, Part 1, Uttar Command, 1955, page CLIX. 53. Jayanta Vijay, Arbudu Chala, Prachina Jaina, Lakha Samgraha. Abu, Volume 2, Ahmedabad, 1936, Numbers 261 and 262. 54. H. Singh, Jaina Temples of Western India, Varanasi, 1982, page 12. 55. Ibit, page 192. 56. M. A. Dhaki, The Chronology of the Solanki Temples of Gujarat. Journal of the Madhya Pradesh Itihasha Porishad, number 5, Bhopal, 1961, pages 62 and 81. 57. A.K. Majumdar, Chalukyas of Gujarat, 
1956, page 56. 58 EBIT, 59 EBIT, P390. The chapter ends here. Next chapter, page 299, The World of the Bhaktin in South Indian Traditions, The Body and Beyond by Uma Chakravarti. This is the last chapter.